Hey guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Have you been using a lot of this lately? I know I have, and it can get expensive. Well, I'm going to show you today how to hollow your prints in Chitu Box to save you money so you can buy more important things like a new resin printer or more resin. You ready? Let's do this. Okay guys, now we're in Chitu Box. So I'm gonna go over here and click my open file button. I'm going to scroll down to the Death Trooper and open it up, and it, it is gigantic. We can't print it that big, so we need to shrink it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here, third button down, and I am going to change the 100% down to 40%. All right, so now I'm at 40%. And I'm going to orient this model so it's flat on the build plate, but you can do this any way you want. But we're going to orient it flat so I can show you a few things about hollowing prints. Easiest way to hollow this print in Chitu Box is go up here to the top button under Hollow. Click Hollow. Uh, my wall thickness is set to 1.50 millimeters. If you want to go a little bit thicker than that, because basically you're building a shell and you want a little bit stronger um, model, you can increase this size, but then again, you're going to use more resins. But I found that 1.5 millimeters is perfect. So I'm going to click start. It's going to go through and continue to hollow the model all the way down. And it's complete. It is completely hollow. Well, you could just go over here and add your supports and everything would probably be hunky-dory or it may not. In fact, it, it, I can almost guarantee you it will not if you're printing the model hollow. And the reason being is because of this. I'm going to scroll down about halfway and you'll notice that half of this model looks like a giant suction cup. And what's going to happen is since this is your build plate, and this build plate raises and lowers down in the vat where the FEP is, this suction cup is going to stick to the FEP and it is going to drown in the ooze that is the resin. So what I want to do is I want to add some type of a ventilation hole in here to alleviate the air pressure so you don't have a suction cup. So there's a couple ways to do this. The reason why I love this model so much about adding holes is, check this out, there are two embellishments or two indentations that are already a part of this Death Trooper's helmet. One right here and one right here. So what I'm gonna do is to add a hole. The first hole is to alleviate pressure, to alleviate the suction cup pressure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here to the top, click the dig hole button. I'm gonna change my size to three millimeters. Again, you can adjust this, but I'm gonna go and select add hole I'm going to put it right about there, okay? So now I have my hole. That's going to alleviate the suction cup effect. And also, I want to add one more hole. Now, I like to usually add two holes to my hollowed out prints. The second hole is basically an air relief hole. So when you are cleaning your model with either simple green or mean green or IPA, that the fluid, when you dunk this model down into, it will flow into the model much easier than with one hole. And it will also empty a lot easier with two holes. So I'm going to add one more hole right up here, right there. Perfect. Now, as you can see, I have two plugs left over. You can print these if you want and put those back in, but you know what? I'm gonna leave them empty because it actually looks good without them. So I'm gonna delete these plugs just by clicking the delete key on my keyboard, and they're gone. So now I need to orient this model. I need to orient this model so that it builds upon itself. And if you don't know what a model, if you don't know how a model builds upon itself, I suggest you watch the first video. I'm gonna put a link into that video in the description below, and it'll also be at the tail end of this video. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on the model, I'm going to rotate him backwards just a little bit at an angle. I want to get that hole down there toward the bottom. 
I'm gonna back up a little bit so you guys can see this. I'm gonna angle him a little bit more. Then I'm going to turn his face to where the skull and a portion of the helmet that's blown away is facing vertical like that. So, as you can see, as this continues to grow, especially toward the top, you'll see how right in here, the model it builds upon itself. Do you see this? Out all this area just kind of builds upon itself. And that'll be important when you uh, set supports up in here. So everything looks good. I have my vent hole on the bottom. I have my air relief hole on the top. All I have to do now is go over to my supports. I have my auto supports set up the way I want them. I'm going to click the all button. And I'm going to go through here and I'm going to double check to make sure that everything is set up like it's supposed to. All right. So what you'll want to do is when you're looking at your support structure, G2Box is not perfect. And you may have to go and make some adjustments. And sometimes it doesn't add enough supports and sometimes it adds too many. So as you notice, I float my mouse around the model. You'll see kind of a dark ring or a dark circle as it floats around. That's right. What this is telling me now is everything is going to build out. Everything is going to build out without being an island. Now this little spot right here, this is a perfect example of an island. If I did not have a support right here, I would have an issue because there would be a piece that would be attempting to print in thin air. So I needed a spot right there. Well, look at this up here, and this is interesting. Even though this model shows red area, which usually specifically tells me, hey, guy, you need some support here. Well, again, that may not be necessarily true. Because look how this model kind of builds, and it really doesn't create a pinpoint. So what you can do, since Chi2 Box is not perfect, is go in here, click your Delete Support button, and just select one of the supports and click the Delete button. You see how I move my mouse? It doesn't really go to a pinpoint here. So you're not going to have issues with this. I'm saying that G2Box is going to, you really don't need any supports in here as well. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to delete some of these supports since they're not needed. Go in here, take that one out, take this one out, and this one. And this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. Okay, you see how I move my mouse up through here? It acts like it wants to go to a pinpoint, but again, you can check your work with your slider. As long as there's no island, as long as you can see this edge, as I move up the slider, it kind of builds upon itself. So I'm not going to have any issues along this edge. So if you don't need the supports, don't put them in there. So I, I'm, I can check these as well. That really looks like it goes down to a pinpoint. That one possibly does as well. Look at this right here, guys, right up in this corner. This is another indication we might need another support. You see that little pinpoint in there? All I really need to do is just add another support in there, right in here somewhere. In fact, I might need to add it right in there. Okay, so now I've got an extra support. So I might need one there. I don't need one there. So for all intents and purposes, everything looks pretty good. I may need another one right there. You see how that kind of goes into a pinpoint? I'm going to put a support there. And again, you can spend all day with this. You can go through and check to see uh, that you need supports. I mean, some of these you may be able to remove this one possibly, and maybe maybe that one. But I'm going to leave that alone. All right, I'm going to leave those. I'm going to leave those alone. I might put one right here just for just for good measure since that does come into a point, but I don't, since that's a hole, it may not matter. You know what, I'm gonna leave it alone because there's an, actually a support that's right in there. So I'm gonna leave that alone. So if everything looks good, support-wise, this should print perfectly fine. Now if you're printing in a heated uh, ultrasonic, uh, these little spheres will come off really easy. 
if you're not if you're not you can actually heat it up with a, um, a hair dryer slightly and do this before you cure it heat it up with a hair dryer slightly and use your nippers and some of these supports will snip right off now I have tried printing this without the spheres I have had some issues with it um, uh, staying on the on the supports but again this is just how I do it but uh, hope that helps you guys if you have any questions about hollowing models or how to orient them on the build plate please leave them in the comments below I am really good about answering all those comments and I really want to help you guys and I want all of you to be super successful in resin printing and have a lot of fun to boot so hope that helped you guys and now let's look at how we apply some rub and buff to this guy Hey guys, once again, thanks for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. There's lots of great content that's coming down the pipe and I don't want you to miss it. Also, if you have something that you want me to go over, put it in the comments below. I read and answer every single comment. I really do. Okay guys, thanks again. Have a great day and we'll see you next time on 3D Print Farm. I know a lot of you have been using a lot of this lately. Well, not necessarily. Hey guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. I know a lot of you have been using a lot of this lately. Well, not necessarily Elegoo brand. It's actually a really good recipe. Well,